Unit 1, Chapter 1. So basic ideas, 1.1 is sampling. So the difference between a population and a sample is very important. And we will be using it all semester. Statistics is the study of procedures of collecting, describing, and drawing conclusions from information. A population is the entire collection of individuals from which the information is sought. A sample is a subset of a population containing the individuals that are actually observed. So sometimes it's in the wording to identify if, it's, if they're talking about a population or a sample. So a survey of all the faculty at STIC is the population. A sample is a subset of a population. In a survey of 100 customers at the mall is a sample. It does not say all customers. It's a survey of 100 of them. 10th grade math MCAS scores for mass. All of the 10th grade math MCAS scores for mass is population. Simple random sample. So a true sample has to be a simple random sample. It's chosen by a method in which each collection of the population items is equally to make up the sample. So the sample really truly represents the population because everybody was equally likely to be chosen. For example, 10,000 lottery tickets are sold, five are drawn as the winning ticket, but every ticket is equally likely to be chosen. So here, say a physical education professor wants to study the physical fitness levels of 20,000 students enrolled at her university. She obtains a list of all the students, gives them a number from 1 to 20,000, uses a computer random number generator to generate 100 random integers between 1 and 20. So every integer was equally likely to be drawn. And these 100 students were invited. So yes, is this a simple random sample? Yes, all students were equally likely to be drawn. Let's say the professor also now wants to draw a sample of 50 students to fill out a questionnaire about which sports they play. The professor has a 10 a.m. class with 50 students in it. She uses the first 20 minutes of class to have the students fill out the questionnaire. Is this a simple random sample? No, this is a sample of convenience. She just used one group. Not everybody was equally likely to be drawn. Right, samples of convenience. In some cases, it's difficult or impossible to get a truly simple random sample. So sometimes you just do this by a convenient method. It's a sample that is not drawn by a well-defined random method. For example, a construction engineer has just received a shipment of a thousand concrete blocks. The blocks have been delivered in a large pile. The engineer wishes to investigate the crushing strength of the blocks by measuring the strength in a sample of 10 blocks. Explain why it might be difficult to draw a simple random sample. Physically, it could be difficult for this engineer to go through and label each block and have a truly simple random sample. So this could be physically difficult or time consuming. So what could a problem from a sample of convenience be? It's not going to truly represent a, this entire population. The 
could have grabbed a bad batch of blocks. It's not a simple random sample. Everybody equally was not equally likely to be chosen, so it's not going to represent the population. Often, if you're asked um, if something's a sample of convenience, like say you go to the mall and you just walk into one store and interview everybody at that one store, that would be a, sam um, a convenient sampling. Stratified random sampling. It's when the population is divided into groups called strata. Then a simple random sample is drawn from each stratum. So this one is kind of important. It's you have an entire population and there are different categories or different strata or different groups. But once you break up those groups, the sample that you're taking from each group is a true simple random sample. So for example, if a company has 800 full-time employees and 200 part-time employees, draw a stratified random sample of 100 employees. So they have a thousand employees, but they're different full-time and part-time. So these are the two different strata. So you have 800 full-time and 200 part-time. We want a sample of 100 employees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 80 from here and 20 from here. I'm going to take 10% from each one to get this 100 because it's going to be the same percentage from each one. And not only that, it's going to be a simple random sample of 80. Everybody was equally likely to be chosen. To get my stratified random sample of 100 employees. All right, cluster sampling. So this is where the items are drawn from the population in groups or clusters. It's useful when the population is too large and spread out for a simple random sample to be feasible. For example, to estimate unemployment rate, a government agency draws a simple random sample of households in a county. So every household was equally likely to be chosen. However, they visit each household and ask how many adults live there and any, but, and any of them are unemployed. What are the clusters? Why is this a cluster sample? So they did a simple random sample of clusters, which were the households. But then anybody in that household that was unemployed would be in this sample. So the clusters are the households. And this is a cluster sample because Everyone in those households was sampled. So it's not a simple random sample of all unemployed in that county. The clusters were the houses and every unemployed person in that house was in the sample. Systematic sampling items are ordered. Every K item is chosen included, chosen to be included in the sample. So you have a way of identifying which ones are going to be included before you do it. Like um, if something's coming off an assembly line, like, oh, let's do every third car or every fifth car. So for example, automobiles are coming off an assembly line. It's decided to draw simple systematic sample for the detailed check of the steering system. The starting point will be the third car. Then every fifth car after that will be sampled. So you start with car number three, add five, add five. Those are the cars that are going to be sampled. There's a system in place before they are sampled. Voluntary response samples are often used by the media. Call in the radio station, call, uh, text the TV, text your vote in, those types of things to engage the audience. So the, yeah, just about what people think. So voluntary response samples are never reliable. People who volunteer an opinion tend to have a stronger opinion than is typical of the population. People with negative opinions are often more likely to volunteer their response. Plus, who is the 
who's watching the show. It does not represent the entire population. It's just who's watching. So, a statistic and parameter. The difference between a statistic and a parameter is a statistic is a number that describes a sample. A parameter is a number that describes a population. So what you think is a statistic, that's what the both of these are. It's just one is describing a sample, one is describing a population, but they're both what you think of as a stat. Which of the following is a statistic and which is a parameter? So you, you have to determine, are they talking about a population or are they talking about a sample? That's what really matters. 50% of the teachers at Central High School are female. So all the teachers at Central High School is going to be the population. So that makes the 57 a parameter. Because all teachers... at Central is the population. And a sample of 100 surgery patients, right there, it says we're talking about a sample who are given a new pain reliever. 78% of them reported significant pain relief. So my sample is 100 patients which makes the 78% a statistic. S is to S. P is to P.